Hi there, here's Samsung's 32 inch Wondertainment series smart TV. Well, the reason I'm excited to see this one is Samsung's own Tizen OS. However, even though we don't have a Play Store, you still get all the apps you need from Netflix, Prime Videos, YouTube, Disney Hotstar, and many more. Continue watching and I'll show you everything you want to know and accordingly you can decide if you should buy this or not. But before we begin, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so you never miss an update. Also follow me on my social media handles for more tech info. This is your friend Texing. Let's get started. Here is the box mentioning powered with Tyson written in the center. On the side are some manufacturing details and the MRP. Let's unbox the device. Inside the box you have a user manual, you have the screws to mount the stands. The stands are made of plastic, pretty decent, nothing fancy but still pretty good. You have an adapter, you have the power cord, you have two batteries for the remote and the remote itself. It's a nice twisted design of the remote, it's nice, very simplistic has shortcut keys for Netflix, Prime Video, Z5, volume up and down, home button, pause play button, back button, D-pad, the voice assistant, power button, nice, simple and functional. So we have fixed the stands and table mounted the TV, here's a first look at it. The bezels have a charcoal grey finish and have a textured design. They aren't really thin but uniform on all four sides, looks pretty clean. You have the Samsung branding on the bottom bezel. The stands though small are sturdy and won't let the TV fall, just in case there was a concern. The back is made of good quality plastic with the same textured design, though most of us won't be even seeing it if the TV is wall mounted. Looks really nice. Some ports are on the side while some are behind. On the back are Ethernet, Optical, Antenna, AV Composite and AV Analog Audio Out. On the side are two HDMI ports out of which HDMI 2 supports ARC, one USB port and power input. Sadly, no 3.5mm headphone jack. But overall I can say that the build and design of the TV even with those thick bezels are impressive. Alright, let's turn it on and set it up. Meanwhile, a quick look at the specs. HD Ready VA display with a resolution of 1366 by 768 pixels, 60Hz refresh rate. 20 watt output supports Dolby Digital Plus, Alexa, Google Assistant voice support, Apple TV built in with Apple Kit for AirPlay, and Tizen OS. So, there we are booted. We press the home button and we come to the list of apps. Okay, so we can see gallery, we can see internet, Netflix, Prime Videos, Z5, Apple TV. Wow, it's nice to see a Samsung budget TV also come with Apple TV pre-installed. So if you want an Apple TV box, you don't need to buy separately. You basically can just buy this TV and you have access to Apple TV. Wow, that's great. Okay, let's go back. We have Netflix, Prime Video, Z5, YouTube, Tune Station, Apple Music, Samsung Promotion, Facebook Watch. Okay, what else do we have here? So if you come in the source, you have TV. This is where I've plugged in my pen drive. Let's turn it on and you can see all your folders. You can open pictures. That's great. You can see previous pictures, next pictures. So that's really convenient from a pen drive. You can access your data. Let's play a video and see. Let's play a 2K video. There you go. This is an MP4 file playing without any problem no lag, no stutter and super smooth. So basically playing full HD files on the TV from your pen drive is absolutely fine. Should we even test a 4K file? Okay, let's, let's just test it for the fun of it. <laughs> and surprisingly, even a 4K file actually works on the TV. Wow, that's great. Let's just play one more. Yeah, that's actually a 4K file playing on an HD ready TV. Amazing. Then if you come to settings, you have e-manual, you have picture settings, sound settings, TV speaker settings, game mode, subtitles, 
sleep timer wi-fi connection all settings in settings you have picture mode sound mode broadcasting general settings support terms and privacy further down you have remote access screen sharing so this is a wireless screen sharing where you can use a windows laptop to mirror the screen to the tv this function is only supported by windows 10 further you have connection guide you have hdmi arc you have optical you have bluetooth you can connect bluetooth speakers or even bluetooth headphones directly on the tv i've actually already connected a pair of earphones here and they work pretty well further in it also has screen sharing which means you can mirror your android phone to the tv here's a demo and there you go android phone is mirrored to the tv and it's actually quite smooth and almost lag free also mirrored a youtube video to the tv and it played smoothly totally watchable further down it also actually supports apple airplay yes which means you can mirror your apple phone to the tv as well check it out so you take your iPhone, go to the control center, look for screen mirroring, you'll see your TV's name, click on it, and your phone will mirror to the TV. And as you can see, it's actually quite smooth. There might be a slight delay, but there is no lag. It works really seamlessly. Now mirror your iPhone, iPad, and your MacBook using the built-in AirPlay. Initially, couldn't find Sony Live and Hotstar, which are kind of a must-have apps today. And I found them in the Tizen App Store easy to download and use. The good thing about Tizen OS is that it isn't resource hungry like Android TVs. So even with lower RAM and lesser internal storage, it's fluid and snappy. However, the availability of apps compared to Android TV are far lesser, but most popular apps that you need are available. So let's play YouTube and see the quality. So this is a full HD video playing on YouTube and frankly, it looks pretty good for an HD display. It has a peak brightness of 300 nits and you can see enough detail in them. The videos are playing really smoothly thanks to the 60Hz refresh rate. The colors are vibrant and look really punchy. What impressed me are the blacks, quite good for a 32 inch panel. I did notice a slight light bleed once in a while but mostly negligible. It's something you will find with most TVs at this price. Overall I can say the display experience is truly impressive for a mid-range smart TV. Also tested a couple of OTT apps like Netflix. The app interface is smooth and extremely responsive. Let's play something. There you go. Netflix is playing perfectly fine as well and you can change the audio and add subtitles in the settings above. Here is Prime Videos. It took some time to boot but again Prime Videos app on TVs always takes time playing some content on it and it played without any problem. Similarly, you can change the subtitles and audio for Prime videos as well. So the device comes with Google Assistant, Alexa and Bixby as a voice assistant. So you can use Google Assistant or Alexa. By default, I have set it to Alexa because that's my preference. So all you need to do is press the mic button on the remote and you can ask it to play a song. Alexa, play a song. Because of copyright issues, I cannot play the song but you can see that the music is started playing and the best part is the remote volume key. So the remote volume key is actually when you go down, it goes down, it goes up, it goes up. And if you press it once, it's mute. Very, very handy and a very smart idea. Simple, easy and really fun. I actually like the design and the shape of the remote. It's very handy and very ergonomic actually. And finally, let's check out the sound output. Wow, they sounded pretty good for 20 watt speakers on a 32 inch TV. Clear and crisp with no distortion even at high volume. Overall, the TV has a very good user experience. Quick boot as well, which comes very handy. All the apps you need from Netflix, Hotstar, YouTube, the works. 
If you are a Samsung fanboy, this is the small smart TV to get. This variant comes with Bluetooth support and it's priced at 16,799 on Amazon.in. If you want to save some bucks, there's another variant without Bluetooth for 15,999. However, I highly recommend you get the one with Bluetooth as it's always going to be useful and for 800 rupees, it's a no-brainer. I'll leave the links for both in the description. If you'd like to buy one, you should definitely check it out. So I hope this video was helpful. If there are any questions, mention it down in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Until next time, cheers.